Hi there! In this video I'll give you my thoughts on the Sigma 150-600mm sports lens which I use for most of my wildlife photography. I don't do any sports photography and I mostly shoot birds and a little bit of mammals as well but mostly birds. And this is my main lens, I've been now using it for two years I think. Well, let's go straight into it. The short review. This lens is great. It's worth the value of it. The image quality is exceptionally good for the price and I really mean it. There is very little to say about the image quality to put it down. The only thing that really comes to my mind is the vignetting in the corners, but that is very easy to fix in post. But if that's a problem for you, then that might be a bigger critique or minus for you. But for me that's not a huge thing at all. And the vignetting only really comes uh, comes in, uh, in with the 600mm maximum focal length shooting wide open. And yeah, especially during darker darker situations you you really see that it is there but for me that's never been a huge problem it's so easy to fix in lightroom or whatever soft software you are using so sharpness really really good uh, i use this in a sony body the lens is natively this one is for canon there's a nikon version as well but i have the canon version and i have converted it to sony so uh, I use actually Sony a7 III, so you know, keep that in mind. I haven't used this natively for Canon. Obviously, probably the autofocus would be faster with a Canon body, but I cannot say a thing about that because I haven't tried it out. But I use the MC11 adapter and it works fine. I've never had any problems with it. Anyway, so that's it. But the sharpness is exceptionally good as well. There's no problems with corner sharpness or corner blurriness, I should say. Uh, the image is sharp from the whole area of the photo and I haven't even seen, I've done not, not any scientific tests, but I've done my own tests with taking photograph, photographs of the same subject with 500 millimeter focal length and then 600 millimeter using this keeping the settings the same uh, and then trying to see uh, in my in my software you know post on computer whether there's any differences in the sharpness of those images and I don't see any I think even using it in the maximum focal length it uh, takes very sharp images so there's no problems in the sharpness that's that's really great and I would say that the image quality in general whether you are a professional or amateur photographer the image quality is good enough for you and I really do mean it the image quality is great if you really need that extra light coming through your camera body and you really want that extra blurriness in the background you might want to save up the money and get some of the f4 lenses but like i do most of my photography in this very dark north country and to be honest i only struggle photographing with this lens during the very very dark months of november december january and february those are tricky for me because if i want to use this lens during these dark months I need to pump up the ISO very high, past 10,000 in the camera body, a lot of times, not always, but a lot of times. And that, that's a problem, but I would say that most people probably do photography in a lot more brighter places than, than up north over here. There's always the moment when it gets too dark to get the sharpest possible images and then you just have to know how to work around it no matter really what gear you use so i wouldn't really say it's a con for this particular lens because it applies to any gear that you use but you just have to keep that in mind if you really want to shoot in dark dim places save up the money and get an f4 lens but 
yeah, it doesn't mean that you cannot use this in darker places. I a lot of times just slow down the shutter speed and use 1 50th, 100th of a second, even sometimes 1 15th of a second while photographing dippers, for example, in the rabbits. So there are workarounds around this problem. It's, it's not an issue if you have a sturdy tripod, you can really low down the shutter speed, even using a 600 millimeter focal length. So anyway, let's move forward. The build quality of this thing is extremely good. The lens hood, this is, I think, aluminium. It's very hard, sturdy. Uh, in the Tamron, it's version of 150 to 600 millimeter. Kind of the competition of this one. It's plastic, so this is heavy, but it's extremely sturdy. And uh, yep, I really love it. Uh, it goes well in here, and you can flip it in like this as well. And uh, the front element is very wide. I think it's 105 millimeters, but I'm not sure. I might be remembering that wrong. But uh, you can attach over here a protective glass. I haven't used one. I probably should, but I haven't used one. You can do it. There is, there is a option for it. That the whole body of this thing is metal. So during these freezing temperatures, for me at least, I feel that some sort of protective thing on top of it is a must because otherwise it's impossible to handle this thing you know what a freezing metal feels like in your hands so here we have the buttons and I'm not gonna talk too much about them you, you can do some custom settings for the uh, for the focusing I haven't tried that out and then there's a setting for the stabilization. There's basically a setting for just in general movement. And then there's one for panning. I just mostly keep it in the number one setting, which is the general uh, stabilization. Sometimes I take it off, but very rarely. I usually always just keep it on the number one. And then there's a little button for the focusing distance. You can use it in the full mode, which means that it focuses from 2.6 meters to infinity, or you can switch it to 2.6 to 10 meters, which means that if you know that the subject that you have is quite close to you, you can just keep it there and it uh, eliminates the possibility of the focus losing the subject to some, you know, tree in the background and then there is another option for focusing from 10 meters until infinity I usually just keep this on the in the full full meter you know on the full switch and then there's two more buttons actually there is one for focus from automatic focus to manual fo focus overriding and then there is manual focus I usually just keep it in the autofocus when I do stills, but when I do video, I mostly switch it to either a manual focus or the the manual focus overriding thing, which basically means that you can, if you put it in the center to the MO, it uses autofocus, but when you turn the focusing ring over here, it switches to manual focus. So that's a great option for some situations and then there is also a button to lock up there's one little issue with the build quality if like right now i have the lock on but if i leave it like this and have the camera over here it clicks and goes down like this so i would wish that this button would held up a little more tighter but i'm not sure what the reason for that is Anyway, you can just pull it, pull it out and pull it off, pump it up however you want. It works really fine and not, it's not gonna break down. It's sturdy as anything. So build quality, excellent. Uh, one little minor critique of this tripod shoe or whatever is the right word for it, but this part over here, this is not the actual one that this lens comes with. The, the lens comes with uh, part which doesn't have these little 
um, gutters over here and all these holes for li different screws it does have like I think one or two screw, uh, screw holes for the tripod uh, plate but this thing is not Arca Swiss compatible which is a uh, bummer so the good thing is that you can switch it up so you have over here in the original one as well four screw holes and screws and you can take it off I took it off and both uh, you know third party uh, piece over here which is Arca Swiss compatible which means that I can just take it and put it right over here in my tripod and uh, that's great and now that it's there and let's imagine that my camera would be here there is a little knob that you can tighten or loosen and then you can um, then you can switch it from horizontal to vertical easily without taking it off or doing any kind of else hassle so that's great it slides like this when it's loosened and when you tighten it it stays right there well, that's great and that's pretty much it of the build quality the weight of it well it is very heavy but you know what you are getting do I wish sometimes that I had a more lightweight lens yep but a lot of times I do use it on a tripod I have my setup somewhere and I just let it sit then it don't matter I much more do prefer that it's built really well which means that it gets heavy and that's just something you have to live with but if you do mostly handheld photography and you want to travel light then you might want to think about the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter lens which is the more lightweight uh, competition competitor of this one I actually had a chance to try out the 150 to 600 millimeter Tamron lens which is the main competitor for this Sigma lens last year my friend has it and I tried it out for a little while and let's see what I thought of it I really love the I mean it's not lightweight and it's I think it's it's not people say that this is super heavy but I mean that's a lot heavier Yes, it is. <laughs> you said if there was this, uh, I don't know the name in English of this bird, I'll write it somewhere over here. But uh, this little little birdie and uh, I was uh, very excited because here I'm also using your uh, teleconverter 1.4 teleconverter. Uh, so I was able to get like very close up images of this little bird and you were doing pictures of the same bird with my lens and uh, or trying to. Yeah, trying to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you said it's impossible to photograph with this handheld. <laughs> it's too heavy. Yeah, it is. It, compared to this one, it is super heavy. So I, I really love the lightweightness of this Tamron, and I was really surprised how long I was able to like you know keep this up, uh, aimed towards the bird. That's a really big plus because with that one I probably wouldn't have would would have missed some of the images. Or so. Which one is better? Well, I, I don't think it's really possible to rule you know either one out I, I really like both and I think this lens is it's a little bit sharper than Tamron yeah it might be it might be but we, we should do some kind of science scientific <laughs> tests in a nutshell I would say that if you if the weight is it's uh, really sharp yeah. yeah, yeah, I think so too. And and by the way, the Sigma is weird because I don't know what I haven't. I didn't do any photos with the 150, but I've noticed with this Sigma Sport that 150 millimeter uh, doesn't do as sharp as the 600. So yeah, the Tamron is really good lens as well. It's probably a little bit more blurry, not as sharp as this one, and obviously it's more lightweight, which means that. It is easier to break up than this one because it does have some plastic parts and it doesn't have as many glass elements and stuff like that. The the weather protection of it is pretty good, I think, but I'm not sure if it is as great as this one. I know there is the 60 to 600 millimeter version, 
uh, as well or from Sigma and a lot of people do love that one I'm not sure really sure if I would have any use for it because I do have my own lenses for those shorter uh, for distances those focal lengths and to me it just feels unnecessary to have it have that focus focal length that long I rarely even go to 150 with this lens I usually just keep it in the 600 millimeter personally I haven't used the plastic clip-on protective thing I only use this canvasy thing with the velcro I think this is great it's super fast to put on and it protects it really well and uh, I usually just carry this around. I have these strap holders over here, so I can put my strap over here and I can carry it right here, or I can just put it in my backpack. And I never have the, it comes with really great uh, little pack, protective uh, pack that's built for this one comes with it and it's, it's a good pack but I never use that while, while I'm traveling I just throw it in my backpack if I'm not using it and if I do use it I let it hang on my strap on my shoulder would I recommend this and for whom I would recommend this yep I would really recommend this <laughs> it's a great lens it's if you can get this used get one uh, I'm not sure if I would have bought this as a new lens because it's it's a bit pricey compared to the Tamron or even compared to the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter if you are looking a lens for Sony body uh, the price isn't that much higher in the Sony native one I probably if I would have gone for a brand new one I probably would have taken the Sony lens instead of this one uh, but I got this used so the price was really good uh, sometimes I do wish that I had another more light wavier lens and I've been thinking about getting the Tamron one uh, just for two reasons it would be much more nicer to have it hanging over here and you can you can uh, because it's like one kilo I think it's one or, two, or not two I think it's like one kilo or something like that more lightweight so it's a pretty big uh, difference there and you can keep it up doing continuous shooting for a lot longer than with this one so it, it does have some pros over there it would be nice to have both the more lightweight here and the more heavyweight and obviously it would be nice to own the f4 white life lens 600 millimeter bath yeah that's 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 another topic and uh, it, it's it's something that I don't I cannot afford a lens like that at this point maybe someday but not right now uh, until that day this lens is good enough for me and I always I I always feel that the gear is not even the issue the the it's just how you work around with your gear how you use it for the longest time I used a tiny 300 millimeter Canon lens which was blurry as you know anything it was super blurry and uh, it had a lot of aberrations and I could only use it with manual focus with my Sony bodies so I still was able to get a bunch of good photos with that lens so it's not like the gear is end of all everything you know so if you are looking for a budget so to speak gear while a photography lens you might want to think about this one I highly recommend it it's definitely worth the money especially if you find one on sale or used if you buy it brand new I don't know then it's kind of pricey I might uh, think about some other options uh, 
then it's a tricky like then it's a trickier one whether to get it depends I, I I think it depends on what body or system you are getting it because if you are thinking about purchasing a lens like this for Sony body then you might want to think about the Sony 200 to 600 millimeter lens for example but for the price and for the with the adapter the the con the possibilities to use this with a Canon body or a Sony body for example is a uh, I think it's really great. It's a, it's a durable, very uh, sturdy lens. It's heavy, but the image quality is exceptionally good. What do you think about it? Did I miss something? Did I forget to talk about something? Uh, there's a lot of things I could talk about of this lens. I love it so much. But, yep, there's no links down there or nothing. But if you ha have any questions or just you ha if you have used this lens, if you have it, what do you think about it? I would love to hear your stories as well. Anyway, see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye bye.